Hi everyone. Last week we were talking about different meshes, canvas and things. Um, so there's a lot of things where we can combine crafts. I've actually had an operation yesterday. So uh, my hand is not that good for stitching. But I thought we'd have a look at a few things. Now... That's cross stitch done on Ada. I call that cloth Ada. And I went through a stage of dyeing my own so that I had interesting colours. I've been going through looking at what things I hadn't finished. There's a moth. And the idea of Ada is that you have a pattern and you can follow where to put each stitch. I like beading as well. You can see the beads in it. Now have a look at it here. And here. Now, I wanted to talk about what count is. So, when you're talking about Ada and something is 14 or 11 count or 12 count or what have you. All right, so what they're talking about is how many, let's have a close look. And you see the little holes, the little squares, those holes in between the squares on each corner, that's where you're supposed to stitch. And if you look at an inch and you count how many squares, then that's the count of the Ada. And if you look at this one, it's much smaller. There's a bigger number of squares to that inch. And that's really good if you're wanting something really tight that you're not going to see the background through. But if your eyesight's a bit poorer, something like that works as well. Sometimes I have things that are finished. I don't know what to do with it. This one here I've popped pop to that little bit of Ada. That's a larger count again. And then I've done a few French knots and beads off the edges. If it's flying out, I might do more to that. Now, someone like me has a plenty of unfinished projects. Don't you worry about that. But uh, it's still interesting. Oh, here's the other one. Can you see how beautifully they work out? when they're, they've got shiny fabric, far, shiny threads and beads. I've got these patterns as a, as a PDF on my Etsy shop if you're wanting them. You can have a go. I like very small things as you can see that I don't have to spend a lot of time on. And uh, sometimes I think, you know, if you colour your own Ada, you've got You've got the background covered, you know what I mean? You don't have to fill every little bit. Now what does happen if you use different count is you'll end up with a different size. Here is the same design I've stitched twice. The one on the left is on a higher count of Ada. So there's more little stitches every inch and it's smaller. What we were talking about last week was canvas. I've got a few things here, canvas, but you see, and it would be the same, it would be how many squares can you count up in that inch, that's the count of this, the larger the number, the smaller the holes, and this is the one that I was showing you that I didn't really do ordinary stitches, now, as you can see with this one, I've just used novelty threads and I've just stitched through with interesting threads. Maybe I've done some French knots, maybe I've done some seed stitch. But because the threads are so, the yarns are so lovely, it works. And it also works because I painted the background. So, 
when we're looking at that kind of thing that's what it starts with that's the canvas tapestry canvas needlepoint canvas it's called a lot of different things as far as I can see in different places but I collect things like that from the op shop and because you quite often find little bits and pieces that people have finished with and here's one that I've colored can you see I've just done it a little bit of purple a little bit of brown a gold you know and um, made it mottled so that when I do something it doesn't matter if I don't finish it all it looks quite nice so I like playing with that but I just want to show you a few other things now this one here is more for um, uh, latch hooking you know how you you'd go in with the there's short amounts of wool and you knot it and bring it through and you end up with a raised design but I could use that for anything that's what I'm saying um, so there's another canvas but it's bigger uh, this is much smaller squares that would be a larger count Oh, this one here is a plastic canvas. Well, they're really good. If you're wanting to make a little purse or something, it's already stiff, you know. So, that's good. That's why I collect these things. You never know. Anything that's different. So, here is a, a red one. Plastic. But it's the same. I can use that in the same sort of way. So where am I going with all of this? Let me see if there's any more here. And you can buy ones like that with that double thread through. Things like this. And these are uh, disappearing ones. So when you do a um, do a design on something, on you can put it onto actual fabric and you can wet it when you're finished and you can just pull these threads out and you're left with that cross stitch design on something. I probably have one here, but I can't be bothered to dive. But these ones here are, are plastic. They call it mesh in here. but uh, So you'll find it as mesh, you'll find it as canvas, tapestry canvas. You'll find it all different kinds of things. You see how that's different? That's a nice big one. And this here is perforated paper. So if you want to add it to it, to your um, paper art you could do that what I wanted to show you was a couple of unfinished things that I had tried and we might get some ideas so this is a bag I've started to make and look at the size of that that mesh you know and you can buy these bag molds ready in the right shape you see and then you can stitch onto it or stitch through it or what have you I decided to do one with this crazy crochet you know sometimes they make dot we make little bits and pieces sometimes I just stitch through you know but look at the lovely how that sort of shows up so beautifully those those rough ones but I was experimenting with different shapes and things in my oh, look at that one done a little circle and we've pulled some threads out of it this it's very organic looking there now this one's been shelved for years we really should finish it but when I was looking at it I was also thinking you know just looking at junk on my desk I shouldn't call it junk but yeah um we made these one day didn't we Oop. And, you know, something like that. That could easily go on to jazz it up, couldn't it? Can you imagine that you can really add any craft you like to this, I would think. And it would be very pretty. And, you know, that may be something that we can do. We might finish that one. <laughs> Wouldn't that be good? It's another one of those flowers. Um, One more I wanted to show you was this one. I started this one years ago again. And I had this kind of stuff, and I really don't know what it is. Maybe it is for rug hooking, but it's very, I don't know, um, puffy. 
strange stuff. If someone knows what that is, they can tell me. But I just saw some of it at the op shop and thought, that, that also has a grid. That can be used. And what I did with this one was I coloured it again. I painted it with a, a greeny gold colour. I used, um, now what are they called? I can't think. That's what happens when you have an operation and they give you drugs. But I, um, Lumiere, that's it, Lumiere paints. And they, um, they are already waterproof. They are already uh, washproof, you know. So I did this and then I cut out a shape. Uh, on, I put it on black felt. Don't look at that bit, you won't see it. But see the shape here? I thought if it was like this, then I'll cut that little bit out, fold it, and then I've got a nice little flat bottom in my bag, you see? That's the idea. But I wanted to look at the technique. That's what I was interested in, to show you. So I found this stuff, didn't know what it was, didn't know what to do with it. I popped it on this black felt. And then I started with mixing up some water and PVA glue and applying it with some different fibres. And that sort of gave it a background colour. Sometimes I might have used a bit of silk, I'm just looking at it now, trying to see what did I do. And then sometimes, some lovely bobbly yarns, I've couched them on, look at this lovely zigzag, little curves I mean, yeah, and then I also used that grid to add in some crosses, so you can see here in different, um, different kinds of yarns, sometimes I've just done little seed stitches, just, to, just because it's got some shine. Look at the lovely shine in those. And um, it's added something again to it. And, you know, this is something that can be shelved and then come out and you can have different ideas about what you might want to do. I mean, but once again, we could add bits on. We could make this very glam if we wanted. You know, up the top there, perhaps, of our bag. So I would line it so that you wouldn't see all of that mess. But isn't it pretty? Doesn't it really open it up to the things that you can do with this mesh? Or all the different crafts there are. This might even be stuff that's, um, is that stuff that's anti-slip, you know. The roll of that. Anything with squares on. So think outside the square. Think about things that you can use and have a go. And maybe I will get round to finishing these. Hey, maybe we'll try something different. I don't know if many of you crochet, but crocheting works well. That looks really nice. I think I've got another one like that. Hang on. Unfinished again. But look at it. And honestly, that is just little tiny bits of, of uh, different yarns that I've joined together. Crocheting. Just tiny little rectangles. I'm using the different, um, different textured yarns. You know, it looks really great. See this side. Got a little circles, a few little circles there. I did always mean to finish this one off, and it's nearly there, really. That one doesn't need lining. A nice, nice handle there. So, does that make you think about little bits that you might have tried, and you have left over, and you don't know what to do with? Hmm. Join them all together. That could be something. So I'm thinking about that. Thinking what might I like to play with. 
have a look at this one. Now, you might not think about this one as a mesh, but it is. It's hessian or burlap. And I was trying different things here with the same sort of effect. You know, I was doing little buttonhole flowers. I was doing some needle weaving. We can cover all these things if you're interested. I do all different kinds of crafts. This one's just a little lace flower that I've joined in because it fitted in prettily. And that. Chain stitch daisies. But underneath it... Let me see if we can spot it. Can you see this? Uh, all of this. There, I can see. Underneath is a piece of crocheted doily or tablecloth. Can you see it? And I had dyed it, and it's got orange, and it's got yellow, and it's got orange, and bright orange, and peach. And I just put it down one end, and I made it flow up to the other direction in much um, more subtle colours but you know I really like this one and once again I didn't need to fill the whole thing this putting down some sort of lace or something underneath it that really worked a treat so there's plenty of things that I will be experimenting with in this kind of vein um, as well as everything else I do and I hope you're interested I hope that you got something out of that and uh, maybe we will finish something. I do love the colours on that. And I started with one thing, but now I'm thinking, oh, I, I, you know, that would be really nice on there. We could add in little patches that we've sewn or bits and pieces and make it really quite interesting. Hmm. All right. Well, I have plenty more, but I just wanted to get a quick one off to you whilst I'm I'm not sewing so well maybe in a few days and uh, and we will we'll work on this and and come up with even better things now just to show you that uh, I did occasionally finish things and and um, make something out of it I did make a bag this is a bit raggedy now this old bag but I, similar little needle weaving there to make that flower a little crocheted bit there you know this one's a bit rough and ready but I used it for many years and something a little finer another wee bag I made A circular one. Let's have a look at it because I did a bit of um, crocheting with beads and used some finer ones in this, some finer like crochet cottons rather than the thick walls and um, I really liked it. So I do have plenty of bits and bobs I did finish and used, but I just hope this has given you some ideas of things that you might want to make that use some of your bits and pieces up. So we have been looking at different meshes and Ada and canvas and also the different unusual things that you can use these things for. Don't forget the burlap. Uh, but you'll see, you might be able to uh, finish some of these things and make something new from all of your old bits and pieces. So look out for bits of canvas to work on. And use as a base for further artwork. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to press like and subscribe if you're interested.